<laughs> What's up, you guys? How's it going? <laughs> what an intro. What an intro. That was my Yuri Slavkovsky and Caden Gooley impression. You like that? You like that? Woo! Okay, that was fun. That was a fun game. That was way more entertaining than anyone thought it would be. That's Ace Ventura. Thank you very much for calling. Alrighty then. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. That was fun. It was entertaining. I'm a little out of breath because I haven't jumped that high in a while. Probably since uh, high school when I did high jump and I was actually decent at it. The first answer to your question though actually is yes, I did get a haircut. So my wife does them. She's awesome. If you don't like it, you suck. I'm kidding. No, they're great. They're great. This is going to be one take and also one breath. <laughs> Okay, so slow down, DC. Calm down. Bring it back to center. Okay, so this game, the Montreal Canadiens started off not that great. It wasn't looking that great in the first period. It was 2 nothing for the Minnesota Wild. And uh, you know what? Before we move on, let's talk about this real quick. Real quick, how the Buffalo Sabres selected Jack Quinn over Marco Rossi. You'll never live it down. You might never live it down. Marco Rossi scored his 11th goal in the season. And Jack Quinn scored his first goal of the season for the Buffalo Sabres. Albeit, though, the Sabres scored nine. Nine on the Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't know why you're I don't even know why you guys are watching me. Just go watch Steve. Just go watch Steve tonight. It's going to be a good one. I already watched the first few minutes. And uh, he inspired this channel, as some of you know. So here we are. Drew Deeks, Steve Dangle. And uh, anyways, so I'm a fraud. Okay, I'm a fraud. I'm a copycat. No, um, I'm not actually. All right, let's actually talk more about this game because I'm just on. I'm on one tonight, and uh, it's gonna be quick. It's gonna be real quick to be honest with you guys. So Matt Boldy and Mark Rossi get the Canadians off, and there is just no coverage. There is no coverage on Matt Boldy on the first power play goal, first goal from the Minnesota Wild in this game. It was bad. Matt Boldy was by himself, and like his shot was a a change up. So I'm not sure if Sam Montebo just overplayed it or I don't know what it was, but regardless, there was bad, bad coverage on Matt Boldy. Excuse me, on that goal. Marco Rossi puts the wild up to nothing. And then David Savard, snipe show David Savard, who is just upping his trade value by the game, looked very, very good. It was a great play from Nick Suzuki and especially Cole Caulfield. The pass to David Savard there was gorgeous. Mwah, chef's kiss to you. It was great, and the shot was even greater from David Savard. Top left-hand corner, he buried it top cheddar. Beautiful. Nick Suzuki, Captain Nick, and uh, we'll get to number 20 in a second. That's why I'm wearing it. I usually wear the jersey of wherever the Habs are playing home or away, just so you know for fun. I'm telling you that. Nick Suzuki on a play, on a power play goal, actually, assisted by Uri Slavkovsky and Mike Matheson. Thank you again for the fantasy points tonight, Mike, by the way. Uh, this is one of the better moods I've been in after a loss. Let me tell you right now. Uh, Nick Suzuki helps tie the game for the Canadians. And then Brock Faber in this game, power play goal. This is where it was like, oh, you all are Mia. You just, I could have traded him right there. I just, I could have traded Armia right there on that play. But regardless, the Canadians come back. And Uri Slavkovsky, you saw the jump at the beginning of this video. You saw it. It actually hit Slav on the way in. And a shot from David Savard upping his trade value again. And you see the tip from Slavkovsky. He gets his third of the season. I don't know if that's his first two-point game of his career, but it very well could be. I don't have the stat sheet in front of me. I'm doing it one take here. I'm sure that's probably the case. I think. I think. I could, no, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I might have done it once before. I'm not in positive. But regardless, Kirill Kaprizov finishes off the Canadians in overtime after a call that Marty St. Louis did not like on Cole Caulfield. It was a cross-check. And you know it's bad when Marty St. Louis says, that's so bad, because here it is. Marty does not like the call, and regardless, the Canadians actually still kill off the penalty. They make it to overtime. They stay 4-on-4 four four for a bit, and then it goes to 3-on-3, three three, and Kaprizov gets himself in excellent position with Gouli and Caulfield trying to defend him. He goes to the other side of the net, and he buries it. And you know what? There was more stuff that happened in this game. We saw a fight from Caden Gooley and Marco Rossi. And, you know, it was a weird fight because these guys are two young guys. And, like, you know, Caden got a couple shots on Rossi. And Rossi got a 10-minute misconduct on the play. So that was interesting. Brendan Gallagher took a hard hit from Zach Bogosian. And uh, Zach Bogosian got a two-minute, got a four-minute double minor on that. Justin Barron took another hit in the corner. And uh, I don't know if he made himself vulnerable. He kind of seemed like he did a bit there. 
And either way, he drew a penalty, and I think he's going to be okay. That's the good news on that front. Slavkovsky, another fantastic game on the line with Nick and Cole. The guy is realizing more and more how strong he is. When he gets himself in there, he can jam those pucks loose, and he can create space, and they're creating more offensive zone time. Nick, Cole, and Uri are doing. I love it. It's fun. It's fun. I'm kind of rushing through this because... The battery's dying on the camera. I'm not going to lie to you guys, so I'm not going to fiddle around. I mean, I got to mention it. Emil Heinemann makes his NHL debut with the Montreal Canadiens, and he plays just under six minutes in this game. So we didn't get a chance to see much of him because the Canadians have had a good thing going lately, and they're playing with a lot more intensity, a lot more pace. They're playing with a lot more consistency in general, so it's hard to mess up a good thing. So like I mentioned, Pizzetta comes out of the lineup, Heinemann comes in, and he plays with Jesse Ulladen and Mitchell Stevens, and he barely plays, and neither did Ulladen, which is a shame because he's playing well, and whenever he's out there, he does good things, I think, has better offensive touch that we've than we've realized. And then Mitchell Stevens is kind of just there to an extent. Um, that's just how I feel about that. But in general, yeah, we barely had a chance to evaluate Emil Heinemann because he just didn't get the ice time. So he looked okay in certain instances. He didn't look out of place, but didn't see much from him. But you know who we continue to see much from, even without a stick? Jaden Struble. Still consistent, still playing well. Love the way Struble's playing. Love it. So that's all I got. That's all I got. Did you have fun? I had fun. If you had fun, subscribe because I'm going to be hitting 5,000 subscribers soon, which is awesome. You guys rock, man. You guys rule. All right. If you watch this and you haven't watched Dangle, you <laughs> Go watch Dangle. This is where he shines, okay? When the Leafs deserve to get hammered by their own fan base in a building that they have dominated attendance in, and that's Key Bank Center in Buffalo. So go watch that. I just got to say, I'll be watching it. I'll be finishing it off. So thank you guys for supporting. Thank you for watching. Go Habs go. Almost time for the Christmas break. We'll see you guys in Chicago tomorrow. Deeksy out. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.